started. Uh, my name is Ben Braden, and uh, I'm an elk, Ballard elk, uh, and I've been a member for about nine years. I want to start by telling you something that's a little to do with this. Is last night I got to tour a uh, National Science Foundation research ship, 261 foot icebreaker, built about five years ago. It's an amazing ship. Uh, the professor gave a, a great presentation on the last month that they were up in the Bering Sea uh, measuring wave heights and how they've changed with the receding ice and, and the erosion and stuff. Guy looks sort of familiar. Got a great tour of the boat uh, by the first mate. I mean, everything from the, the engine that they just pulled out of it to the pods to, I mean, the, the what you'd expect to get from a first mate, not, not from a uh, PR guy. And uh, we ended up having dinner with the crew afterwards, and one of them that I know asked me if I'm still involved with Outdoors for All, which I am. I, I in the winter, help disabled kids ski. And um, all of a sudden, it clicked with my wife and I that the professor, son went through the Elks Therapy Program mm. and was my first convention when I went to the Elks Therapy presentation was to put on stage. But I had already helped the Outdoors for All, so there was that connection that's like, wow, if the Elks Therapy Program hadn't helped this kid, he wouldn't have been with me skiing. And then uh, to do this last night with his dad and realize that his dad just gave me a presentation uh, kind of makes the full connection of what we're doing uh, as Elks and what our predecessors did for us to set this up. Uh, it was pretty amazing feelings, obviously still is. Um, and that is something that you can market, right? That kind of thing is real, it's out there, and if you've got those kind of connections, you can share that this is what we do as Elks, uh, and this is how it affects real people with real stuff. So, just wanted to share that with that experience. Uh, but it's not part of my presentation, it's just a random thing that happened last night. Um, so marketing, the, the key as you've all read here, is uh, attracting new members and retaining new members, right? It's what we all want to do. Um, the only function that does that is marketing, right? And so marketing is one tool you guys can use for this. Um, backwards. <laughs> it's a tool to get new members. It's a tool to create exposure for your lodge. It's a public, get some public support for what you're doing. Share the story I just gave you, inspire donations, right? Children's Hospital and ENF, provide, provide recognition to your members. This is a big one because getting recognition to your members is something that's gonna make them more active, right? As, as you know over there, I'm seeing down in Vancouver some great stuff. Um, make everyone feel good about what you're doing. You just felt good about that, which is good advertising. Um, and it's efficient when done correctly, and it does not need to be expensive, right? But it requires planning. You need to sit down as a group, whether it's your officers or a PR group or your government relations group, um, whatever. It requires planning. So your plans need to have a goal, right? Whether your goal is um, building membership, whether your goal is getting more of people off your delinquent list, or uh, engaging your current active members, or your current inactive members, uh, needs to have that goal. You need to focus it on that. So you need to ask those questions on what can you do to accomplish this goal, how do you achieve it, and what do you want it to accomplish. So what is marketing? Marketing, this is a long-winded uh, definition, is the systematic planning, implementation, and control of a mix of activities intended to bring together buyers and sellers for the mutually advantageous exchange or transfer of products and services, right? Okay. There's the definition of marketing. Is that on the test? At the end? Well, it is. It is. What does that mean to us? You know, who's our buyer, who's our seller? But that's something to keep in mind when you're setting these goals, right? Um, so you think of it as a step-by-step -step process that begins with that unique selling proposition like a short, compelling sentence that describes our business, right? What's our short, compelling sentence that describes our organization? Elks care, elks share. There you go. Bars so it's open. out there, use it. And then, yeah, bars open. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Service uh, store. But um, all these market marketing elements, they must work independently, but they must work together to get to that bigger goal, right? So you're going to have different avenues of marketing, but they need to work together. So then what's advertising? That's the title of this 
presentation and advertising is one component of the marketing and advertisement includes placement of an ad in newspapers, magazines, uh, direct mailers, emails, TV, radio, online presence, whatever. It is the most expensive part of all marketing plans. It doesn't have to be super expensive, but it is where you're going to spend your money. So different types of advertising, news, everyone, my wife just joined us, Jennifer, welcome. Um, <laughs> Hi, Jen. There's press releases, which I'm sure some of you have done, um, which, which are more of just a blurb. You, you shoot out to all these different avenues to receive it. Um, public service announcements, you have a paid advertising, just putting an ad in the newspaper. Online presence and promotion, just having your Facebook page out there is advertising, right? Uh, your lodge newsletter. Who are you advertising to with your lodge newsletter? Your members. So you got you're getting your members active. So different population groups are going to receive that information differently, right? So your older groups are going to prefer print media, right? Everyone can accept that. Some don't. Middle age, which I learned uh, recently, is 45 to 65 now. <laughs> Surprised me. I thought I was going to be middle age. Apparently, I'm not. Um, email, print, and social media, and, and adults are in that group. So it makes sense. The younger adults are using social media and video. And then your current young adults are more into to text and apps and video, right? So which method does your lodge use? You take a moment to think about what your, your main <coughs> form of advertising is, which is it, and who, are then, you, who then are you excluding? Because right? that's important to remember what you want to do, what you want to advertise for, what your marketing goal is if it's to bring in new members. Which way are you advertising? Well, that's the member you're going to bring in, right? So the way you advertise obviously depends on who you're targeting. And for the Elks, we need to start learning how to target that 30 to 55 year old group, which we're not very good at. Um, people that are becoming empty nesters, I know a few uh, that are amazing Elks. One over the corner there. Uh, wait, I got a pointer now, don't I? Right there. <laughs> um, but they're people with a passion, right? They, they just Their kids are just gone and they have a passion for life still. And that's who you know, helps to get engaged. Uh, but for a future, we need to learn how to market to the people that are 21 right now. Um, not necessarily going to get them as members, but if we learn and push, uh, by the time they're 30, they'll, they'll join, right? Um, so each group sends and receives it differently, as we just went over. Um, just went back. And so you need to know who your target is on your advertising, right? And it is important to think about it. I know you're like, well, we're profiling right now, or we're only hitting one group. You need to advertise to all these groups, right? Because every Elks Lodge is diverse. I don't think any of our Elks Lodges are in a retirement community. Are they? I mean, I don't think they are. They're, they're in a town or a city that has all age groups. Yours does, too. Yeah, yours only, yes. Yeah. Right. There are some that, you know, you can say, hey, we only need to market to 60-year-olds because that's the youngest people are going to get here. Um, but I don't think we have that in our state. So it's something to consider. So knowing what your advertising goal, just like you would with your marketing plan, you need to know what you're doing with your advertising, right? Take some time to think about it and direct a plan at the beginning of the year. So you're trying to ex increase the exposure to your launch, number one. That's what you're doing with advertising. But are you trying to increase participation with your current members? Are you trying to increase membership? Will those work together? Um, are you just trying to provide information, which is sort of advertising, but it's not going to get a a membership boost, um, or are you trying to provide information to the community, or are you just simply, you know, put some pictures out there and say, hey, we're awesome. Um, but know what the goal is, and, and, and you, you want to use all those. So, exposure, right? That's what we need. We were just uh, sitting in here, before you got here, talking about how we're, we're very good at not sharing what we're doing. We're, we want to learn to, you know, secret, right? Secret up. So no exposure, you don't exist, right? You're not going to bring in new members. Simple as that. Uh, it sounds harsh, but it's true. Um, not even your own members. So it's going to, no exposure, you're not sharing these fun things that are happening in your lodge. Your own members are not going to come down and do stuff, right? They're going to end up on your delinquent list. They're going to take off. Um, so the wrong or limited message keeps away potential volunteers 
and new members. So that's something to think. People don't just know that you've been doing it for 15 years, right? This is how we do it. Um, get that message out there. So it matters. The message itself matters. As you said, the bar is open earlier. There's our line. Cheap drinks. If you have a great bar that's open and nobody's sitting at it, advertise your cheap drinks, right? You need people at that bar to keep the bartender paid to keep the building open, but know what type of member you're going to get in there, right? So your, the message you give, know what it's going to get. Um, if you're advertising bingo, if you've got bingo across your wall, um, who's that going to bring in? Again, it depends on the type of bingo because, as we've learned, there is this new type of bingo that brings in a very young, active group. It's kind of fun to watch. But, um, but the message your lodge puts out, just think long and hard about who it appeals to. Don't leave us hanging, man. Yeah. Uh, it is a 21 and over bingo. Um, it happens a little later at night, and um, it's themed and maybe costumed. And uh, we did have a Rocky Horror Picture one and a Freak Show one. And, and, uh, you can imagine what it was like. Hey, it makes a lot of, it makes a lot of money. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah. They've, in one year, they've raised over $30,000 for charity. Wow. So wow. It does, but it, know that that brings in a different crowd than your, you know, Sunday afternoon window, right? Why um, matters? <laughs> so, the Elks have a photo, a, a graphic, and a tagline. Um, does your launch have one, right? Do you have a logo everyone recognizes? and knows who that is, right? Do you have one of those? Think about getting one, because if you have that out there in your community, people will just recognize the image. And do you have a tagline? Do you have something that in a lot of your advertising you're using, that people now when they see that, they think about your lodge? One that I like is when I see Battleground using their advertising is dedicated to serving our community. It seems to always be in their ads. Um, that's something that helps make the connection over time. Um, so advertising matters, as I keep saying, <laughs> but it requires thought and action. It takes time and a consistent message. It's achievable and rewarding. Your members will be more active if you advertise to them about what you're doing. I guarantee it. There's no way that they won't be. So then what is paid advertising? Back to the definition, any paid form of non-personal presentation and promotion of ideas, goods, and services by an identified sponsor. That's the important part to me in there. The time or space that is devoted to it is paid for. It uses a set format to carry the message rather than a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation, and it easily identifies the sponsor of the message. So that's something to always consider in there. There's two main types. There's promotional, introducing new events and ideas, say like a hoop shoot. Uh, encourage an interesting event like the Hoop Shoot, explaining features of a new idea or service. And then there's institutional advertising where you're attempting to create a favorable impression and goodwill for a business or organization. That's something to really focus on a consistent message over time. It's important for the Elks. Yeah, you're going to have these event promotions, but the institutional advertising is consistency over time with a tagline or a logo that you consistently use is important. <laughs> so newspapers, something that, that gets ignored a lot, it gets ignored by our lodge. Um, we don't really have one to advertise in. Um, but if you do have one to advertise in, don't ignore it because it reaches the broadest range of people in your community. Right? It, it doesn't select who gets it. it. You don't have to have power. You don't have to have a computer. It goes to everybody. Um, it goes every day, often. So it's a wide demographic. Um, hits the, the new people that are trying to figure out what to do in your community. They're going to see that in the newspaper and go, hey, I should check out the Elks Lodge. Right? So it's universal coverage, utility, and power. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's added value. Uh, newspapers are not something to ignore. So there's obviously, we're getting out of roller, I should slow down, sorry. So newspapers do present the largest of all advertising media. They, they do in our country. There's dailies, weeklies, national, regional. There's special audience newspapers, like, say, the Seattle Weekly that we could advertise in. Um, newspaper supplements, I don't know if we'd ever get into that. Um, so you got display advertising, you have your classified section, and special ads and inserts in the newspaper. But newspapers are especially important advertising 
for your local advertisers. And why is they have strength? They're credible. Newspapers are still the most credible item of advertising in our country that people actually believe. They have a high degree of familiarity, acceptance, and respect. And they reach that mass audience. And, and this is a serious thing in advertising nowadays. If it's, if it's out there on something that people don't trust anymore, they're not going to pay attention to it. Um, so they do turn, your community is going to turn to the local newspaper for local news more often than anywhere else. If you have one, use it. Um, recent study, it's five years old, but <coughs> readers are more than twice as likely to act on ads in a local media. Twice, 50%, or excuse me, 150% <coughs> more likely to act on those. Um, print online is the most effective communication for driving action. Right? You want an action out of your ad. You're not just doing it for getting money in the newspaper. Um, local media is four times more trusted to provide relevant information. Uh, you can see the, the blue here, the 52% local media is the most trusted they found in this study. It's pretty amazing to me. And this is in 2014, I would, I'd love to see the numbers now. Uh, it might even be higher. Same thing, up over 50% does the best job of standing up for people in your local area. People that took action after seeing an advertising in media, still over 50% in local media. Websites are next, commercial TV is below 25%. So your advertising advantages of a newspaper are important. You have high reach, high geographic concentration, it's getting your whole area. It's good frequency, it's tangible. It can't be ignored, it's on your doorstep. Short lead times, you're flexible in changing an ad. Uh, the relatively low cost compared to, to other things. And you can, you can, if you wanted, communicate very detailed information in the newspaper. So a few basic pointers on writing your own newspaper ad is a headline. Get the reader's attention, right? Eye-catching phrase, use your tagline, use your graphic. Control your copy length, use a link that supports your message, what are you trying to get them to do, right? Um, great place to consider your graphic and tagline again. Use comparison in your newspaper ad if you can. Use phrases such as, you tried the others, now try us. How we can incorporate that into your lives, I don't know, it depends on your area. But think about that in what you're trying to do, because it's going to make somebody think about what they're seeing. And the body of ads should list the benefits or reasons why the customer the community member should choose our organization, right? Use the word you instead of we. That'll make them think about themselves. Use bulleted text and highlighted key points. Like this. Here's an ad for a local lodge. Notice, down here, you, right there. You know exactly what's going on, big graphics, the dates there. Oops, backwards. Somebody will learn this. Same thing here, Kelso Longview, right? Here's another ad they put in the newspaper. Contact us, Elks Care, Elks Share. Want to join an organization where you can make a difference. Another one from Long Beach. Notice you're still using the you, right? Great ads they're putting in the newspaper. Here's a few other poor towns in. You're invited. Be calm and become an elk. There's a call to action, right? Simple stuff that actually does work and gets an action by people. Battleground, dedicated to serving our community. They put that on the news site. Tagline right up top. Right? It does matter. So here's a unique one. Ad that I think it was Battleground. They did have Battleground. Um, this is a placemat. They bought a bunch of placemats about how cool the Elks are, gave them to their local diner to use. Right. How cool is that? I was like, that's a great idea. Yeah. Place that templates available on the oaks.org website and yeah. the manual. Yeah. You don't have to read it. Exactly. Table tents, placemats, all kinds of stuff following the oak too. Spokane just got a new sign up by the street, right? People busy street driving by. Yeah. <laughs> but it probably has brought in action, right? So know that each of these ads you just saw utilize our state 50% copay program. So they only paid for half of those ads. Right? These lodges are using the state program to increase their activity and membership. I hope everyone starts using it. 
easy process, and it's simple, <coughs> as you can see. Um, you just email a copy of your billing statement to our state board, the state copay coordinator, uh, which would be below if I had the whole thing up there. Um, and you can get reimbursed for 50% of an ad, or at one time you can get 100% of an ad that's for a membership drive, up to $300. So you can now extend your advertising reach using this money. Or you can save money, depending on what you want to do. Yes? How much of the state budget is allocated to this? To the, um, the 50 percent copay is a little over $5,200 a year, and we've currently used 66 percent of that budget. And when it's gone, it's gone. Uh, so if, you know, jump in now if you have invoices. Uh, the uh, $300 one is $10,900 that is 300 bucks for each lodge and it's a new thing we just got to pass the last quarterly <coughs> so hopefully lodges start using it i've heard of one lodge that i think uh, oak harbor just did a membership drive and and used that money planning on it uh to extend their advertising reach and got uh, i think you said seven <coughs> seven applications that day so it worked um, so it allowed them to extend their, their reach so not just newspapers don't ignore newspapers. If you have one, use it because it will help you. Um, and if you want to maximize that advertising you're doing, run it over into elect electronic media. The newspaper, if they build it for you, will give you a copy of it and you can use it in other places. Um, you have things like your virtual website. Everyone knows what that is, right? I'm not seeing any heads going like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes? Yep. Uh, those of you that don't, it's, it's on elks.org. Your lodge has one and it's there. And I'll show you in a little bit why it's important. It is the most important <coughs> online presence your lodge has. You can have your local lodge website, Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, for the younger crowds, I personally, and I hear this all the time, I don't use Twitter. I don't know why I do it for my lodge. I don't use Twitter either. I don't use Instagram either. But our lodge has that, and a lot of our members use it. Right? I don't understand it. I don't get why people use it. But they do, so don't ignore it. Find someone in your lodge that you always see on their phone with using Twitter and say, I need you to be our advertiser on Twitter, right? It's an easy thing to do. And then you have your e-newsletter. <laughs> so your virtual page, this one is required, like I said. Are you doing okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know what time it is, I'm going to talk, so. <laughs> Tell me if I'm going too long. Um, this one's required, right? Your launch has one. Um, each page is up there, and the worst thing you can do is ignore this. this ignoring this is going to hurt your lodge more than anything else you can do. Um, and so those of you that want to know what it is, it's a it's fast, simple, free marketing for your lodge. It's there on Elks.org with your lodge number after it. So seriously, do this. Pull out your smartphone. You only got a smartphone here? Pull it out. Look up your lodge. What's that? Oh, a little bit too late. Uh, tell me what comes up. I did this with, um, who did I do it with? Ocean Shores. Our Facebook page. Uh, well, that's, that's good. And what's right below in the top three? So this is what your members? Our chamber, uh, pay, our page on our... Not even the Elks.org, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's there on the, on the top, you know, because that first page is where people are going to click, right? So click on that if you can find your own.org in that top group. That's the image that your community and your members are going to see first, right? And I think the Ocean Shores one came up with a, a picture of, a, of an RV lot. Um, so that's what they're going to think the Elks is about, right? So. Pay attention to that, get information up there, because that's what people are seeing. And if it looks inactive there, even your members that haven't been coming down in a while are going to look at that and go, well, the lodge is inactive. Why, why would I go down? Makes no sense. I'll go somewhere else where it looks more fun. Um, so pay attention to that, please. Um, it's really super easy, because you're there's already populated tabs on there for your calendar, for your newsletter. And there was some debate at one of these sessions about, oh, we can't post the newsletter, that's private information. You can, it just has to be password protected to members only on the site. So your newsletter, your calendar, uh, news page, really super easy, and people will click there. I've had people actually send me messages through our Facebook page like, hey, your calendar's not up to date. 
because they're looking at it, and oops, I forgot, right? right? But it really takes about 30 seconds to go in and throw a PDF copy of your calendar up there, and then anybody can go there. And people are, are looking for it. There's RV sites, whatever, and if somebody's not regularly paying attention to that, like Ben, people are going to get bad information or old information or no information <coughs> and move to the next spot. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. The only negative on that site that I've seen, and maybe it's been corrected and I haven't caught it, is the size limitation of the updates and where you're running your bulletin up or, or your newsletter. Um, Tacoma has a fairly large one, so for me to post it on there, I've got to chop it by at least 50% before it'll take it. And of course, I can press it down before I start anything, so that's the only issue, obviously. Yeah. So, our, our last PDF comes out about 12 megs. Mm -hmm. and it needs to be below five to go up there, right? Right. So what I do then is just save the one to go up there as a reduced size file, and it'll be under it'll be under four. Okay. So in, in PDF, just save it as a reduced file, size file, and then okay. throw it up there. Oh, you shouldn't need to cut anything out of it. I'd be surprised okay. if you did. It does get kind of, you know. Because our, ours is 25 pages with a bunch of graphics and flyers and right, everything, right. so we get it up there. Um, well, come visit more often then, Ben. <laughs> all right. I need to, because my Anytime. hands are very really loud. So, as we just all talked about, your members, your community members, they're, they're doing this, right? They're doing the search that we just did. So, share the information that your members need to be active in your lodge. So, the cyber assistant is the person that's going to do this. And, and everyone knows what a cyber assistant is. See a couple of heads nodding. It, this is this is a position at your lodge. It exists right now. Your lodge has a cyber system. It's by default your secretary, right? So don't leave it like that. Don't don't leave it like that, please. Because your secretary is busy enough. I see a few secretaries in here. You're busy enough, right? You want to take this on? So assign it to somebody else in class. Just grab somebody, one of your officers, and make it them, and tell them they got to go do it. Right? It's easy to do. It's easy to assign. They'll have full access to it. You can change anything on it. And, and honestly, it is the easiest thing. You don't even have to upload a PDF calendar. You can just link it to a Google calendar that you keep constantly maintained. Um, and that calendar itself is something people are looking at. It's the most looked by far on ours, and I'm sure if you look at everyone, it's the most looked at thing. So have your secretary do it. It's very easy to do. Manage user there in Clemson Web. They don't even need to open their computer. They can do it on their phone right now and set you up as a cyber system. How many cyber systems can you have? As many as you want. So I'm living here. I mean, we have Did some. Did you write this? I guess no. Thank you. No, thank you. You set me up. So here's an example of a great virtual home page. Experience. Notice they've got the information, they've got a great picture of their watch. They have their Facebook feed right there on it, right? So they're showing activity. They're, they're showing a beautiful picture of their lodge that has an address and directions. I mean, this, this couldn't be better uh, set up to get people to, to like your lodge, want to go to it, and have it look active. Uh, so what kind of advertising can you do there? You can put up your lodge newsletter. Uh, newsletter, as you said, password protected for members only, but it can be any member in the country you can look at it then, which is great. You can put up your lodge facilities, do you have a lounge, your hours, restaurant menu, do you have RV hookups, do you have a golf course, um, stuff that people want to know and say, you know what, I want to go learn more about these elks. Uh, you can put up all your lodge officers, right? All the people that haven't been coming to your lodge meetings, they might still like to know, you know what the exalts really looks like, right? Yeah. Put up a picture of them. I know we laugh because we're all involved, but it's a real thing, you know, and then all of a sudden they recognize you when you're at the grocery store and then they want to come down to the Elks. It's a little thing, but it does matter. Uh, share what you're doing on your calendar, as we keep mentioning in the last two minutes. Uh, your members need to be advertised to, they really do. Um, put up links about That's additional stuff in your lodge, your community, uh, it's easy to do. Embed your lodge Facebook page, which I just showed you the Beery Lodge had up. It's publicity and promotion. It will make your your page look more active, the people that look at it will think your lodge is active, which will make them want to be involved, because people don't like to miss out, right? None of us like to miss out on a good party. Uh, it's the way it is, it's the way we are. Uh, it will make your members more active. So again, here's here's that Facebook feed. 
It's right there, and you can click on the events tab too, right next to it. So you see in their feed, or you can just click on the events. You don't even have to go to Facebook. You can see their events right here on the virtual homepage. Include videos, right? Because the videos are going to get what age group? Yeah, she was listening. Good. Yeah. So include videos. Because video is king, right? Video is king in that, in that whole age group, right? So here's an example of the video gallery on the virtual home page. All these different videos you can link right there. They aren't stored here, you just set up a, a YouTube page, link them here, put in descriptions. Your community and your members can go look at it now. It's available on your mobile devices, as you all just realized, right? If you use it on your mobile device, know that the, the tab up there on the, on the left is going to get you that full menu you just saw on the website picture. And you can look at everything the same way as you would on the website. So your cyber assistant, there is a manual that Elks.org has out there. I've also added one on the Washington State Elks website with information on how to include payments online, right? So you can get your dues collected online. So it's something that the national manual didn't have. I added it to it and put it on our state website. <coughs> um, so please use it. So, is your lodge newsletter advertising? I know I was going to say. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. it is. I mean, the advertising is Yakima, Linwood, right? These are all newsletters that are advertising. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> but it's good to see the bullshit. <laughs> so, newsletters are fun. You can have a good time with it. But they are advertising exciting, fun things to your members. So look at it. Make sure they're not too cluttered. Again, copy length is important. So less words, more pictures. Um, we'll get people to be active. Um, if you want to use a local website for your lodge, absolutely can. Again, if you do, make sure it's up to date and active. Don't just leave it stagnant or have it quickly linked to something that is active. Um, it's very easy to do with Wix or WordPress. Ours is a WordPress site, and I know a bunch of others are too in our state.